You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, welcome back to the continuing coverage of CES 2015. I'm John P. I am Sean Captain. And we are in charge of this crazy panel that we're about to have right now. Well, they may take charge, actually. That's true. We're kind of That's hoping true. for that, actually. We want to hear <laughs> some good true. stuff. That's true. So Sean and I are very happy because we are going to all have a discussion together about 4K technology. And we have two absolute experts here joining us. We've got Dan from Samsung. And we've also got David from JVC. So thank you for joining us, guys. Oh, well, thanks for having us. Appreciate guys. it. We so, are very happy to be here. Now, mm -hmm. just to set this up a little bit, okay? I want to point out that we've got a wide range of, of knowledge bases here. Okay, Sean is the smart one on this side over here. Okay, I'm the guy who doesn't know anything. Well, you know less than me. I feel bad for that's, you. That's that's good. So, and then, <laughs> but David is from JVC, and David is more on the side of like cameras and production and capture. Let's say creation of. Uh, he's going to be helping us. All he does more. You the do pro more. division, so it's procreation. Right. Oh, it's procreation. <laughs> right. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. He's an expert on procreation. Make four K, <laughs> not war. Okay. And then we've also got Dan, who's going to be helping us from Samsung with more of the expertise on the on the display kind of you know yeah. panels on the consumer side, yeah. consumer yeah. tech and stuff like that. Okay. And so I'm going to be playing the role of idiot, which I'm really <laughs> I'm expert at that, uh, but. I guess the first thing that I would just tee this conversation off with is, is 4K actually here yet? Of course it is. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's kind of like if a tree falls in the wood and nobody's yeah, around. Or what, I mean, are pe I have no idea, I literally don't know. Are people buying the 4K TVs? People, are they consuming 4K content? People were asking that question about HD 20 years ago when in 1984, they shot the Olympics in LA in HD, and people are saying, well, what is that, you know? And people would get up close to a monitor and say, my God, this looks like 3D. It's, it's so, so much resolution, I don't know if I can stand it. Yeah. And it's taken a while, but HD has worked its way through the uh, process of becoming dominant and now we're seeing the same thing about 4K. It's not point. going to happen overnight. And that's a great point because if I want to go back and watch the Olympics of 1984, it'll actually look good because it was shot in the technology that that's HD right. That's very of, important. You know, settling for what you have. Yeah. But on the consumer side, uh, you know, you walk into your uh, big box store, your favorite electronics store, you're going to see a very a, a large uh, display, a large percentage of the TVs supporting 4K. And it's uh, you know they're here now. They're, they're available. I have certainly I have certainly seen a lot of uh, a lot of price <clears throat> price drops for 4K over the last couple of years, and we're seeing all kinds of panels from really really cheap kind of you know like five hundred dollar range up to several thousand. Like Samsung has a beautiful curved uh, 4K 3D television that's at the higher end of the price range. You know we see it all along. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it? Are, are people going in now and saying, uh, okay, there's a 1080p TV for like $400, but for like a few under more, I could get a 4K, will they do it? Do they know it yeah. well enough yet? Um, well, I, I think that even if they don't know, they're going to see the difference in the store. So uh, the, there's these great TVs labeled 4K or, or as CEA uh, states, ultra high definition. Uh, the right. ultra high definition, 4K ultra high definition, uh, which is the name they'll see, common name throughout the industry. Uh, these TVs deliver a certain resolution, which is, you know, from, you know, it's like a camera, right? It's like pixels. It's a, uh, it's defined. Uh, but there's a lot of other picture quality attributes that really make this spectacular. And uh, we're probably going to get into the discussion of content. But you know, one thing to keep in mind is these TVs display current content. They do up conversion. Not, it's not, certainly not of the caliber of uh, capture, 4K capture, but this makes all of the content that you normally watch, be it uh, broadcast TV or, or Blu-ray, today's Blu-ray, I should say, uh, look so much better. So it's, it's demonstrable. 
it, it's kind of like I guess when you had 720p and people would buy a Blu-ray player and it was 1080p and it would do up conversion of, of mm. DVDs or something and just it made, makes it just look better. Well, it's still happening now. You said 720p. Half of the broadcasters in this country, ABC, Fox, and ESPN are all 720p. Why are they doing that? Why would they stay on you, well, YouTube? You can get 1080p. You well, get 4K on YouTube. <laughs> Why the, would they do that? And the other half are 1080i, which you could say is half of HD. So we're not full HD yet yeah. in in America. You David, know? you guys need to sell them some new cameras. Oh, over they there. all have the ability in the cameras. Oh, it's the, okay. And what's amazing? It's the other side of the equation, and I think they have to really go back and look at some of the problems that had to have been overcome with the adoption of HD. And I don't want to get, I don't want to throw too much ice water on this, <laughs> but but to be realistic, this migration to HD came about largely because of the migration to flat panels. Yeah. We had a change in form factor. If you remember back before we all had flat panels, we had these great big Ugh. beastly things that were hard yeah. to retail. That's you right. know, a 36 inch CRT television weighed 175 pounds. You couldn't just drop one in your shopping cart and <laughs> stick it in your SUV. <laughs> uh, the sleek look of the flat panel was very popular. I like to say they even look better in the one pixel mode with the power off yeah. <laughs> uh, because it became a style thing that people put in their homes and maybe curved will become the next style fashion thing, regardless of what resolution you have. But the adoption of HD sort of came about because of this migration to a new form factor. And I like to also point out the adoption of DVDs took place almost overnight from VHS. And believe me, I know VHS well. I've been with JVC for 35 years. <laughs> we invented VHS, and when VHS disappeared, whoops, yeah. <laughs> because the, the migration was, it wasn't because of the picture quality. We had digital VHS, we had uh, HD that we could do, and very high quality. Uh, super VHS, we had all of the picture quality attributes, but when the form factor changed to that convenient little disc, everybody dumped VHS. And, and that was a, a, a change that has not been replicated with the migration to Blu-ray. I, I still think, and you can correct me on the numbers, yeah. I still think about 70% of the discs that are watched out there are DVDs. And uh, mm -hmm. it's been a problem for the industry to try to get people to buy into the higher pixel count. So we've got yeah. these problems that are lingering, and we've got half the half of America still watching 720p, and the challenge is going to be to convince people that, well, more pixels are better, so we'll jump into 4K. I, I think that's, yeah. uh, uh, people brought up a lot as a challenge for 4K, and then even for, uh, even for 3D, everybody remembers 3D was um, they said, well, when flat panels came out, it's because they were flat. Um, you know, HD was part of it, but really it's like, it's thin, I can carry it, I can put it somewhere. Whereas like 4K, you've got to convince someone, or you've got to show someone, like, no, this is, this is a quality thing. Like, it, you're actually going to appreciate the quality That's of the true. So, so a lot of times you see the extra resolution if you're up close, but yeah. we're, we're sort of at gen two now of the 4K world right now. Okay. So we had you know, the first wave of introduction, and um, you know, the folks that are lucky enough to get the CES or see uh, footage of some of these great products from CES, we're now seeing the second generation of products and they're actually mm -hmm. expanding on just resolution. So, mm -hmm. you know, the term 4K Ultra HD, it, it's, it's really larger than just a resolution play. It's the wider color gamut, it's the higher bit depth, and maybe, you know, stop me if no, I'm throwing no, out no, too no, many. No, yeah. we want to talk about this. In fact, Sean and I were talking about yeah. this. We were talking about this before the broadcast, and I made him yeah. stop yeah. because <laughs> you were saying <laughs> that for you, the resolution was not the thing that was so impressive right now. Uh, well, yeah, because um, yeah, by the way, you had me at you had me at color gamut. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, no, because it, it's everyone's been talking about resolution and the whole thing. Like, well, I'm sitting three feet back, I can't see it. Um, but I think the sleeper story, or maybe not much longer, has been that 4K is just one part of this whole basically recreating the cinema experience. So it's yes. a wider wider color gamut, and yeah. you'll tell us what that means. Of course, yeah. And also a high dynamic range, I think, also. High right? dynamic range as well, yes. Yeah. yeah. So sell me on the color gamut. Okay, what's, so what's, the what's color gamut, 
Uh, so uh, on the production side, and you can uh, maybe explain some of the on the camera side, but cameras are able to capture incredible, you know, al you know, almost uh, the color range close to the human eye, if I'm not mistaken. Sure. Much, much, much wider. Probably th at least 35, 40 percent wider than uh, what's what's out there today. So. Okay. Um, you know, the, the color palette we've had is now, you know, I'm going to throw out a, a term, Rec 709, which is, I, I don't know, 15, 20, 20 years old? Is, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 20 years and old. And that's not so different uh, from what CRTs have, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, no different. So different we're going thing. from, you know, a, a color space, right? It's a it's mathematical color space. Yeah. You know, we're almost doubling it. It's, it's, so, uh, and so we're talking the about range the of, it's really the yeah. range of colors that can be We're talking about that triangle. Uh, it's like that, triangle, that exactly. Like that. Red, blue, and green, right? That's right. And the all the three primaries kind of and the are, wavelengths around the edge. They're all kind of like mashed in between until you get to that's white. Right. And you're saying, so when you're talking about the color gamut, you're pulling it out. We're pulling it out. You're right. saying more green, more red, more blue. Exactly. Right? And all those shades. Exactly. And all in the between. shades in between. Okay. Right. So those are being captured, um, and with some of these new distribution technologies, and we can get into that conversation later. But um, you know, they're being captured, and now with the TVs that you're seeing here, the second wave of 4K TVs, mm -hmm. uh, with things like Quantum Dot, uh, which is another <laughs> another discussion, but uh, but. It's an enabler to 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 widen that triangle, to to produce more colors. Than I, you had I don't before. know anything about yeah. this, but I heard okay. somebody Here, said no. The, no, I mean, one totally. Takeaway. Actually, yeah. I just I just changed the subject on you, which I didn't mean to. But yeah. I, I heard <laughs> one thing that I don't know anything about. Uh, but okay. I heard that somebody was putting like. Uh, they were adding lasers into the TV to like make redder reds. <laughs> is that is that a is that a gimmick or is that real? Uh, did you, did you yeah, hear about no, this? Uh, it's, it's, it's like a do red laser uh, red thing. Phillips. I don't know. I think yeah. Oh, the Philips doing red laser. Yeah. Red lasers and in the to, to like to, to make right. red redder. Right. I, I don't so, know. Is yeah, that yeah, here's where we're going. Yeah. Really red. Here's where we're driving at. It's not it's not just to add more color just for the sake of adding more color. It, it's it's to preserve artistic intent. And what I mean by that is. Producers are using equipment, JVC and other other uh, professional cameras, uh, to capture, and they have a vision of what things should look like and and, and the set that they're they're capturing, and they want these things to be accurately you know captured, distributed and displayed properly. And right now, you know, a lot of the times the only place to see things properly displayed is in theatrical shows, yeah. and we're trying to bring that theatrical showing home. Which brings yeah. up an interesting point, because we're talking about 4K and the Digital Cinema Initiative, yeah. the DCI spec for 4K okay. is 4096 by 2160. Oh. Well, the what everybody with flat panel four. TVs okay. is talking about is Ultra HD, which is 3840 by 2160. Right, the same size pixels, but there are more of them with DCI, which means the aspect ratio is no longer 16 by nine. And that starts to pose a problem. Yeah. Because if you've if you've you know been around, we for get a back to letterboxing years, and crap like that. We're going to be yeah. an immediately letterboxing everything if you're watching a 16 by 9 screen, and then if you go to a wider aspect ratio, a 2.35 or a 2.0, then you've even got more letterboxing. Yeah. So that that's going to be an area that's going to have to be resolved. But I think what most of us here are talking about is a ultra HD experience with 3840 by 2160. Okay. Right. With wider color. Right. Yeah. With so, wider yeah. color and more dynamic range. And here's the here's the thing about dynamic range. Uh, your viewers may want to Google it. Uh, Bernie Lechner did research some time ago about perceived resolution and viewing distance. And he, he came up with a formula and he, they call it the Lechner distance. And he, he determined that with a 42 inch 1080 set, in order to appreciate 1080 on that set, you have to be sitting five and a half feet away from the set. Mm -hmm. The average home viewer sits nine feet from the set. So that can explain in part why 720p has been no problem yeah. for the TV right. network. Even if, they, even if it was there, they wouldn't nine perceive feet, it. They're not going to see the difference. Now, an 84 inch 4K set, has exactly the same size pixels as a 42 inch 1080 set. You have basically four of them. Yeah, so right. according to the Lechner distance, you still need to be five and a half feet away to get the full 4K experience, experience if you're just talking about pixel viewing. And a lot of people say, well, gee, that's great. I have a much more immersive experience if I'm sitting five and a half feet from my TV. But we've just whittled the market down to a, a few people because not everybody sits five and a half yeah. feet <laughs> from their TV. Okay, but yeah. how about 
How about 8K? Because if you've got 8K, you basically, I mean, for so 4, 4K is like four 1080p's, yeah, right? Yeah, now you have to sit two and a half feet. Yeah, eight, 8K is like is is like four. Or get a bigger TV. It's like yeah. four 4Ks, right? 8K is like four 4Ks, so yeah, it's like yeah, 16, it's, it's right. 16 1080p's. Five, six, it's 16 1080p's. Right. Right. But if you're sitting, let's say, 10 feet away, now you're sit. If you sit 10 feet away, is that relatively the same? So now, would, would you know, people, you've seen 8K. What did you think about it? Well, I stood really close to it and I thought it was amazing because I couldn't see any pixels. It was like when cell phones first started having uh, uh, retina displays or things mm -hmm. like that, and you could hold it right up and you're like, I'm looking at a picture, an, an, like a, picture. a real thing, like not image. even a picture, yeah. a thing, yeah. right? It's, uh, NHK has had a great uh, display at NAB for several years of 8K projected with a 24 channel surround sound. It's phenomenal. And it's, that's it's, the Japanese broadcaster? Yes. NHK? Okay. Yeah, in fact, they're using JVC projectors in that display. Uh -huh. We've developed, and we've been working alongside of NHK and with Boeing also, to develop 8K projection uh, for really not consumer applications. Yeah, what would you use that for? Well, I mean, I want one, don't get me wrong, yeah, but I'm I'll just saying, what, what, so yeah, what would you use Many of today's for? applications are commercial, or yeah. commercial based. They are, yeah. What you're seeing, uh, and a little bit at uh, CES, mm. is some of these displays are used for auto stereo, and that's basically 3D without glasses. Oh yeah. The, the, the resolution is high enough that that brings a very good experience uh, of, of 3D, uh, mm. you know, without the burden of uh, glasses, which it's pretty impressive. And that could be for, you know, that could also be for commercial purposes or, or in the home as yeah. well. Right, like simulation, training kind of simulation thing. Simulation exactly. is yeah. very important. If you get on an airplane, you want the pilot to be well trained. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yes. and Boeing recognizes that. Yeah. And what they do is they use these projectors, multiples of the projectors, to create a, 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 a visual experience that has a parity with the human eye so that what they experience in a flight simulator is exactly what they see in the aircraft. And so it's very important and uh, uh, you know, in military training, even uh, control towers mm -hmm. use rear projection for uh, uh, air traffic controller simulation. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of applications outside of the consumer market for this. And uh, that will help drive other products that will make it into the consumer market. You know, oh, may I? Go ahead. There is a, a concept you've probably heard of called the uncanny valley, where something is so close to looking real that it freaks you out. Because yeah, you they know talk it's about not robots real. a lot like that. Yeah, right? exactly. They freak people out. Exactly, and um, so if we have now color space that matches with the human eye sees, we have, uh, I believe NHK determined that, HK, that eight, NHK determined that 8K is very close to the amount of detail you see in real life, and we have dynamic range, and you're looking at a screen, it's like, Originally, when the Lumiere brothers yeah. did the train coming at you, uh, and everyone jumped away yeah. in the theater because they thought it was a train was actually coming right. at them, it, it and really is true. So, yeah. what is this going to freak people out? <laughs> no, <laughs> we hope not. Yeah. No, it's uh, well, of course it depends on the content. If you're yeah. looking at a roller coaster or something, yeah, it, yeah, it might. People, it might. Well, well, then you want to, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in some cases, some content yeah. might be yeah. uh, intentionally uh, created that way. But you know, just pulling this back to 4K because that's what's really here today in in uh, in, a, in a in a big way, you know. You've already, we've already talked about the resolution. We've talked about the expanded color, and all of these yeah. things make a more immersive experience. We, we're, you're seeing curved TVs now, mm -hmm. uh, second wave of curved TVs, which actually increase your field of view a little bit, sort of like the, uh, you know, the theater. In the, you know, the, the, the some theaters have a, a yeah, curved screen. Yeah, movie theaters have that. Movie theaters fantastic. have a curved screen. Well, by the way, before yeah, we move sure. on for yeah. that, can we just touch on that? Because several people in 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 our building at the Geek House, we have one of those 78-inch curved. Samsung TV. The yeah. most frequently qu asked question yeah. people ask me is, why is it curved? Okay, so. Why is it curved? So let's, so can we talk about reasons. that? Yeah. Okay, so one I touched on, it, it adds, uh, if, at the proper viewing distance, your field of view is slightly larger. So that's one, and that, there's some correlation between field of view and immersion. Uh, you know, the, the thought of being there. Just like the big screen in the theater, right? It's a more When realistic. you say the field of view, is that because, for example, at the right distance, I'm kind of equidistant from the center and from the edge, where on a flat yeah. one, I'm further from the edge exactly. and I'm closer exactly. to the center. Exactly, that's uh, one. And, it, and it's filling up your periphery, right? Your peripheral vision. So that's one. Uh, other, it also creates, uh, 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 depending on your seating, it's not that you have to sit in the center. Mm -hmm. You can sit at, at uh, you know, there's a, there's a greater range of seating. 
and actually to have still a great view of the set. And actually, believe it or not, less geometric distortion than you have on a, on a flat screen. Okay, is, cool. So that's another. Um, Sorry for that you know, sidebar, yeah, keep no, going no now. And, <laughs> no, and no. the third is actually, um, because it's curved, that's often there's less glare, especially when you have room lighting, oh, okay. uh, you know, uh, I think or a lamp behind you, or that's an easy one yeah, to relate to. That's an easy one. So, so all of those glare. things, yeah. uh, and plus it looks great. Right? I mean, it does. It's, it's yeah. sexy. Yeah. There's no doubt about it's it. Sexy. Should it? Would it? If you curve it more, would you get more immersive? Is it something that you have a certain amount of curve because you know you, you're you cutting would, it, edge? It, it, it gets to be a challenge at a certain. Yeah. yeah at well, a certain it becomes a challenge yeah. for us too because once you start changing the plane of view, yeah. we have to make adjustments in what we shoot. I mean, yeah. you could go 360 degrees, and there are 360 degree video systems, mm -hmm. but we have to change the way we shoot. Yeah. Because lenses still, no matter what aspect ratio you have, a lens still produces a round image. So mm -hmm. you pick, you know, whether it's that camera or a professional uh, broadcast camera, the lens is going to produce a round image, and within that round image, we create a rectangular frame. Mm -hmm. And usually that's 16 by nine. Now there's a lot of the image that doesn't get shot because of that. Right. You could conceivably have a much, uh, vertically, yeah. a, a yeah. much bigger viewing experience if you did that. I think that's sort of the idea behind IMAX. Yeah that you actually get away from the widescreen, you have it as tall as you have wide. But right? let's, now let's, okay, I'm going to totally shift gears because we've been talking about uh, things from the perspective of maybe what, what the viewers watch and what's concerning them. I have a totally different set of concerns, okay? We do, on this side of the table, have a totally different set of concerns because we produce content. We are the ones who are responsible for filling up your beautiful 4K projectors or TVs or whatever. And right now, if you look around, this is 1080p, okay? <laughs> and so, from our perspective, there are a number of challenges. One, what kind of capture devices are we going to use? And uh, 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 for that, for that, from that particular angle, Cost is a is a factor, you know, for some more than others. It's becoming less of a factor, but there's a, there, there are bigger issues than that. And I, I think, you know, I can answer most of those questions. Yep. We introduced our first small handheld 4K camcorder three years ago. Yep. At the time, and we could do 3840 by 2160 at 60p. But in order to do that, we had, we had, we used four processors in the camera because there's a lot of data. Uncompressed, yep. um, uncompressed 4K is about 12 gigabits per second. Yeah. You got a lot of bandwidth. You're not going to get that through your uh, online um, yeah. right. system here. But uh, in order to do that with that camera three years ago, we had to record on four SD cards simultaneously. Right. And that was kind of a pain in the neck in post-production. We could play it back and everything, but to do it in post-production, you had to run it through a utility, and then you then you had a very large, huge file that you could edit. Um, and we, workflow is one of those big issues, well, one of those that's, big challenges. That's the challenge fact, for far, you. Challenge. Far bigger challenge, because it takes nothing for us to just change out these cameras right here, but those cameras, feed into a live broadcast switcher, in this case, it's a it's a TriCaster, and even though that's the biggest, most expensive TriCaster they make, it won't do 4K. Well, okay, that's true, and yet, yes. there are switchers, most of the broadcast switchers that yes. are using TV stations can, because they will, but they, well, they can, cost a million bucks, right, well, or whatever. They, <laughs> what they, yeah, yeah they are, today. the yeah, Kahuna switchers can cost up to a million yeah. dollars, but and they can, gang together four inputs. If you have a 36 input switcher, you can gang together those and use those as 4K. I mean, they've thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But, um, for instance, here at CES, we're introducing two new 4K camcorders. One of them is under $3,000. It's got the ability to record 3840 by 2160 at 150 megabits per second on one SD card. Now, we're getting a little more reasonable. 150 megabits is still a lot of data. Yeah. And what happens, the camcorder also, by the way, will stream directly to Ustream in HD. You can just change the mode of the camera and you can output from that camera all by itself. So you can get rid of all this equipment. Mm -hmm. 
the, everything, the, the TriCaster, everything. Yeah, you could. Just get rid of it, put one camera there. Yeah, single camera shot, and stream yeah. live. push one button on the camera and go right to Ustream and broadcast to the world. Kind of cool. Yeah, very cool. There are a lot of applications for that, but most you also, people, by the way, have a brand new camera coming out that's 4K with SDI built into it for, I think, coming out at around $2,800, which yeah. I've got my eye well, that's on. What, that's the camera I'm talking about. Is that about. the one? But okay, yeah. Here's so. the thing about that, though. That stream that we send out to Ustream in HD, probably going to be around three megabits per second. Right. Not 150. So a little more reasonable. The yeah. name of the game in distribution is to keep reducing the bit rate down and keep reducing it until people scream. They, they can't see the difference. And this happens in broadcast, this happens in cable. You want the best over the air picture quality from ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox? Put up an antenna. <laughs> because they're broadcasting a higher bit rate over the air than yeah. you're getting through your cable box. Uh, Sean has something really cool, cool to show us, but I have one last technical question to yeah. ask you about. Uh, while we're talking about the, this, which is the codex, and like, oh, you know, glad you brought that up. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we we have to compress these streams to deliver them, and we right, use H.264 yeah. right now That's as one standard. of our and, one yeah. of our big standards. What about 4K, and how are we? Where are we yeah. going with that? Is well, it H.265 or HEVC is the preferred codec now, but getting it onto silicone on an encoder yeah. is not that easy and to do it in a product that is very small and has low power consumption is even more difficult. So, I mean, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. We don't have it now. You don't have that ability in your phone to be able to capture 4K and stream it out live with a with a uh, encoded signal, but yeah. we will get there. And you can capture it 4K in your you phone. You can. <laughs> I, I, this is my favorite toy of the show and I was just dying to, to show it. Um, and this is not the only, um, the only cell phone that will shoot 4K, but I love this one because this is. Um, oh, let me get the uh, camera out. Oh here. yeah, that's right. Sorry, we got it. We actually could do a little. We can show this, this thing. Look at this. Oh so yeah, it's a 4 look camera shoot. Yeah. So this is the uh, the Panasonic uh, Lumix uh, CM1. Um, is it, it a camera, or is it a phone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it really is um, a camera because you have a pretty sophisticated zoom lens system in here. You've got a large, much larger sensor. I think it's a one inch sensor, which is actually what could be used in a sort of a almost professional kind of camera. Yeah, it's it, a big lens. It's I mean, a huge for, lens. For, a, for, a, for a camera yeah. slash phone, it's a big lens. Absolutely, yeah. So let me put it in camera mode here. Oh, and yeah, it just popped out. See the lens popped out, you know, you can, you can zoom with it. Um, you've got full kind of manual controls here. <clears throat> Once I figure out what menu I'm supposed to be in. Um, and, Oh. I, oh, I'm in the wrong mode. Panorama mode. And I just shot a panorama that did Sweet. not move anywhere. Um, let's see here. There we go. So let's just get to a regular mode here. Um, so, you know, I'm zooming with it. I can switch to different kinds of modes. I've got full control. As if I'm using a real camera, I can, you know, control this zoom lens here, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, I can. And I'm just using this uh, kind of uh, dial here. You're actually here manual, on manual ring dialing it there. Yeah, it's it's as if you actually are using like a real camera. You can change things like aperture, which almost no phone has a physical aperture yeah. where you're controlling depth of field, and it shoots 4K. And I mean, getting to your point, where you originally had four different SD cards you had to record to, all the complexity, and now you know it's in a phone, which will cost about a thousand dollars, but a phone without a huge camera, and it costs about that as well. So from a production standpoint now, all of a sudden, at yeah. least, we may not, we may be kind of not ready to broadcast live in 4K, but I guess there's really no yeah. damn well, excuse me, for us not to yeah. be recording at least in 4K. Yeah, Cer certainly archiving, recording, archiving, capture, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, but there's some good news, and, and certainly I respect there's challenges on the, produc on the uh, you know, production side, uh, but you can stream 4K today. You know, there's yeah. Netflix is streaming 4K. Today. That is so true. You can see theatrical movies. And I think I uh, MGo, YouTube. YouTube I mean, you know, there's a lot of, it. you know, encoded in HEVC. Which, by the way, most most TVs today, certainly all the Samsung TVs, have a decoder to uh, decode HEVC. Um, and there's other ways to get high quality content. You mentioned that there's some compromises, which you're absolutely correct. There are, 
And, and, uh, but if you want that higher quality, really take, to take advantage of some of the capabilities of these sets, uh, there's other ways to do that. And one that's, uh, that will be available uh, very shortly is a download model. Very, very large file, mm -hmm. a movie. I'm talking about a theatrical right. movie, maybe 35 uh, to 50 gigabytes, download it to a hard drive, uh, through you know through the internet yep. and then play it on your TV and that's 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 a way to get very very high quality content and, and we've seen I mean we've seen Sony's been doing that for I think about two or three years they have mm -hmm. their player which now works I guess with all TVs right which everyone's excited about um, Dish uh, announced that they're going to be having on on demand movies that's right uh, yeah. come down in 4K and okay. Samsung is going to tell us. We're what gonna, big oh, news? Yeah, uh, okay, we got some big news. Do we have some news? Also add yeah. Direct Direct TV. We shouldn't leave them out of the equation. Oh, they, absolutely, they absolutely. Have a, they have a 4K service today. Correct. Uh, it's, a, it's a trickle download to their box, mm -hmm. um, and and displays on your TV through a technology called RView, uh, which is also you know. So, so there are ways to get you know right. uh, you know theatrical content and enjoy it on your TV. Red had a product called Red Ray. Do they still have it? What's up with that? Do they still oh, do yeah. their own? Oh, it's a, it's a camera. Yeah. What's yeah. A no, Red Ray is a player. That was just oh, a Red Ray player. Yeah. We okay. use yeah. them at trade show demos. But and don't they I don't have, know whether they're selling them or not. But I thought they also did a co download component to that as well. I can't remember. Well, that was what it was designed yeah. to. That's what, okay. It was yeah. a big okay. server yeah. that yeah. was designed right. to yeah. okay. capture and store movies and things like that content. You know, when you get into the content business, you've got all the issues with Hollywood and dealing with copyrights and standards and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I'll get it. you know, this this is a it's a can of worms that fortunately we only get a sliver of on the <laughs> professional side because we're still dealing with broadcasters who just want to get good HD out in the field, yeah, yeah. and they need to be able and they're, and actually they're looking for more efficient ways to stream it back. You know, they've been using microwaves and satellites and now we can give them a camcorder that will stream live HD yeah. with nothing more than an LTE right. modem plugged yeah. into it or, or through Wi-Fi. That's sweet. And they love it. They save a couple of hundred thousand dollars on a truck and they can do live news from anywhere, walking down the aisles here at the CES show. But um, for 4K, you know, it becomes a whole new set of challenges for them. The broadcast industry is working on the next ATSC standard, you know, we've been living with one since 1997, which defined the 18 different formats of SD and HD, and that's what all the TVs now are able to, to decode. Well, changing the broadcast standard is no easy process. There was a government mandate to switch to digital, but all the TV makers had to put this into their sets. The current standard does not support 4K. So uh, the next coming, standard but will. There's, news, there's good news. The, yeah. the good news yeah. is that the next yeah. standard is will, but now then, how do you get every manufacturer to build that new standard into the sets, and then do you have a government set-top box program that's going to, to take care of the people who won't be able to receive their TV shows unless they have a new set-top box or decoder? Those are all issues that still have to be worked out. So we could be years away from that happening, but what is happening in the television distribution business is so different from what it was 20 years ago. Started talking about the 1984 Olympics. And we just saw, I guess, one of the important rounds fired here at CES with the announcement that ESPN would be available as a, an yes. over-the-top service yeah, yeah. without subscribing to cable. Sling that's TV disruptive. Service. That that's is disruptive. very disruptive. And I had somebody come up to me and said, that's going to really help 4K. Because now you've got, and, and you know, you people yeah, you can, can get a, work, go right around the right around all that. Uh, well, a Roku box that does 4K yeah. can can now get you your ESPN, yeah. and if ESPN wants to put out an over-the-top channel without cable that's in 4K, hey, you got it there. Yeah. And it's that can also go through a TV smart platform as well, doesn't? Yeah, it? Of course. absolutely. Absolutely. Need to go right through a it doesn't have to be box. Roku. That's sure, right. sure. Okay, guys, yeah. we have had. This has been yeah. awesome. This is like by far my favorite conversation I've had at CES. We, we, are, we, we actually took longer than I thought we were going to, which <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad oh, I got, about. I got one more, uh, but yes, one I was, more surprise. I was going to okay. say, yeah. let's, uh, we've got like two or three more minutes, so okay. let's, you know, it, all the final thoughts okay. and things, let's just cram uh, them out there. So in addition to representing Samsung, I also represent the Blu-ray Disc Association uh, on the PR side. And uh, some announcements we have to make at uh, CES is it will be a next generation Blu-ray. Oh. And, and it has a name. Uh, it's Ultra HD Blu-ray, okay. and uh, you're probably going to ask when. <laughs> right. uh, so the, the timing, uh, it's difficult to say when product will be in the market, 
but certain things have to happen. There's certain milestones that have to happen, and one of them is called licensing, right? It's, yeah. Uh, oh, it's yeah. important, you know, uh, the legal, the lawyers, have to, yeah, lawyers yes. have to do their thing. But also, right before licensing is also, you know, the, the spec has to be locked down. Um, so licensing is expected to commence mid-year. So that means that the, the spec is locked down, uh -huh. uh, and it's going to support things not only not only more you know the 4K resolution, the wide color gamut, the high frame rate, mm -hmm. the higher color bit depth. You know, it's 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 really it's ex exceeding what a lot of displays can even do today. So this is future you know trying to be future proof. So you think we'll see those discs by the end of the year? Uh, it's up to, it's up to the individual manufacturer when they release. But if you look back historically to when the spec was locked down. It's usually five or six months when you see product in market. Now, I can't make that guarantee, but you'll very likely you'll at least see announcements at the end of this and year. And do the disks actually hold more data? Than they the hold Google? a lot more data, yes. They hold, uh, uh, there's two formats of disks. These are new disks uh, that will, uh, because they have to hold so much more data uh, to comprise these extremely large files. Uh, there's a 66 and a 108 gigabyte disk. And, and also the, the throughput, the bandwidth that's required, it's up to 128 megabits per second. Wow. Uh, so, you know, obviously that would be a, a significant challenge for streaming, but for an optical <laughs> display, it's obviously not. You know, to have that consistent, repeatable experience day in and day out. Yeah, that's awesome. David, any final parting words of wisdom for everybody? Well, two years ago I said it's not going to be anytime soon that we have a complete flushing of the HD standard with a replacement by 4K. I'll still stand by that statement. because. But I think what's happening, happening in television is that the ways of getting television are becoming so diverse that this whole concept of a la carte, you get what you want, and there'll be plenty of people able to offer it to you. If you want 4K, you're going to be able to get 4K. You want eventually 8K, you're going to be able to get 8K because the whole industry is not going to be locked into one set of standards like we've grown up with. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it it bodes well for the whole industry that it's not going to be the kind of television that I grew up with, that others grew up with. It's all different now and it's really going to be up to the consumer to make those choices because they're the ones that really decide. If, if, if there are three versions of the movie and you can watch the SD version, the HD version of the 4K, and there are three different prices, and there will be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The consumers will decide what they want to watch, how far they're sitting back, what they want to pay for, and that's a good thing. The customer's still king, Sean. What do you think? Uh, customer being king again, actually, is what I would like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it has been a little rough to get your content, and that's right, it's really, it's just disrupting the whole industry where you don't have to wait for the standards body, you don't have to wait to see what they want to offer you. Um, and you know, I, I held up my, my favorite toy and of course a lot of uh, smartphones, including Samsung smartphones, shoot in 4K. And I, the reason why I brought that up is because um, in addition to you know, the Blu-ray process, which takes a while, the streaming process, which takes a while, it's an upstart thing. Now anybody really, if you have a phone, you probably have a 4K camcorder, you can put it on YouTube, and I'm amazed at the quality of TV shows that people do in their apartment in Brooklyn. Um, so I just think it's just another way where- User-generated content. It yeah. can happen, yeah, yeah and it, but it's not just like horrible cat videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are great comedies and dramas. If you give people the tools and they're cheap, you get an amazing amount of stuff. So where's 4K? I mean, it's it's here and I can you can stream it in 10 minutes when I upload it. Nice. So, <laughs> looking around the show, we're certainly not a stagnant industry, right? Not <laughs> at all. Well, you yeah. guys, thank you so, so much for joining us. It's been a wonderful conversation. Thank you, you guys, mm -hmm. thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm. I think my takeaway from this is, Dave, <laughs> uh, we better upgrade the cameras pretty soon here. Yeah. So. All right, guys, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Thumbs up on YouTube. We'll get it up to 4K as Thanks quickly as we can, okay? Take All care, bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.